Alright, welcome to the fourth installment of Digital Jan's Back. <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, it's not even the fourth! It's episode five! It's episode five, nigga! <laughs> We're using that as the promo. And today we are joined by the Queen. Shoni Sani. Hi Shoni, how you doing? Hi, I'm good, thank you. How are you guys? Good, good, good. good. Fantastic, fantastic. So you've got a lot of fans today? <laughs> that, is, that is such an obvious joke to me. <laughs> Fuck, you come up with a joke. Wait, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I got shit. The dolly with the digital dance. The dolly with the I like that. I like the double D game. What kind of triple D? You know what? We'll, we'll get to the we'll touch we'll go back. We'll get to the <laughs> oh yes, indeed. It's another installment with today. Oh, fuck. <laughs> another blooper. <laughs> Hey guys, thank you again for joining us and welcome to another installment of Digital Gans. Today we have a rose amongst the thorns. Not that I am rich or anything, but we are in a forest <laughs> <laughs> of information and we are going to be guided by none other than Siam, Mawisa and Sanele who joined us today. What's up, Jens? Thank you, Wang. Thank you, Wang. Um, Shoni Sani, thank you so much for joining us. Thanks for having me, guys. Obviously, it's been quite a transition um, coming from the, the, leafy, the leafy suburbs and uh, Woodford <laughs> suburbs of, of Cape Town to Johannesburg. I mean, how long has it been actually since, since you moved? Um, I moved here in 2016, mm -hmm. August, so it's been four years in four. Johannesburg, yeah. And how's the trans I mean, how's settling in then? Well, it started off really, really rough, I won't lie, because yeah. I moved here, I had no place to live, yeah. I, you know what I mean, I had no job, I had no plan, <laughs> and then I crashed on my sister's couch for like seven, eight months before yeah. I booked my first role, yeah. and then I think it's just been a whirlwind yeah. of awesome opportunities since then so yeah. yeah and i think that leap of faith is like uh, has has profited or like has turned out very well since then and um obviously now you have your own brand yeah but... shani sunny braid tell us more about that <laughs> so the shani sunny braid <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. Plug. Okay. so the shani sunny braid is a 31 inch premium hot water fiber mm. that is made in south africa locally made mm. and i am a brand ambassador but also like the face and yeah. then also just in the whole shebang, shebang. you know what i mean yes. so um the the brand shani sunny braid is based basically on just me and how I live my life. Yeah. And um, the hair, it came about because I was doing a brand ambassadorship already with um, Afrotex Primo, okay. Afro. They're the ones who make the hair, they manufacture mm. the hair. And they came up to me and they said to me, how would you like to take our relationship a step further? To the next level. <laughs> to the next level. Yes. The second base. <laughs> like no, they did not. And I said, what do you mean? Yeah. And they said, um, we've got this new hair that we want to bring out, right? Mm. But we, we want to... We want to make the hair's personality your personality. Yeah. Um, and we want to just like bring everything together and just create a brand that is like long lasting, create yeah. a legacy for you. And yeah, just do something different in the hair industry. Cause I don't think that it's ever been done actually where yeah. um, an actress or a media personality yeah. hooks up with a hair brand yeah. and gets in um, at the bottom and like. Yeah. So Shawnee, um, as Sia was saying with your journey coming from Cape Town, you discovered your brand and gained international acclaim as well. I'm just impressed at your star and like how far you've gotten. How the hell did you get to India? <laughs> What's up, girl? Oh my God. <laughs> wow. 
Um, I was actually in one of those periods of time where I wasn't working for like nine months, not shooting anything. And I was working in, in corporate. I was working like doing social media stuff. And I get a call from my agent and she's like, hey girl, um, you need to get to Z World ASAP. You've been asked for an audition in Santon. Get there as soon as you can. And I was like, oh my gosh, I learned my monologue. Got to Z World and auditioned. And I remember like the room was just like, couple of laptops with people Skype from India, the producers from there, and then the, the Z World CEOs and stuff. And it was so nerve wracking, but luckily my girl Nora was throwing a tantrum. So I'm well versed in those. I did my monologue, quite the thing. And then next thing, I'm in India. Yeah. How was India? I'm the food, the experience, is it eat, pray, love kind of up? What is it like? It really, really is like, hmm. It's very hot, there's a lot of people. Um, it is like an eat, pray, love situation. I did feel like spiritual connection, I won't lie. The food is ridiculously good, like ridiculously good. As in, I think I was in hospital in the first what? two weeks. How did you get to a hospital? <laughs> um, the food was great and the hospital was level. So, I'm a young vendor girl coming from the city and I go to India and obviously my stomach is not aligned to the spices that I am inclined to. So I'm there, I'm going every day, chicken curry, but... Uh, uh, uh got gastro or something. I had to go to the hospital because my stomach's like, I'm not used to this thing, what are you doing? Yeah. But other than that, it was such an incredible experience. Um, I got to work with so many great um, Indian actors that I'm still friends with, and I got to work on my craft a lot, and it was such an incredible international platform. Yeah. I'm so grateful. Like, I really hope I get another international <laughs> gig oh, really soon. Yeah. After the Rona, obviously, it's fly off Rona. and be Talking great. After the Rona, people are struggling. Yeah. But, um, <clears throat> I've seen a lot of people pivot. Some people have moved towards online shops and those kind of things. But business for black women, I think, already has presented itself as a challenge. What experiences have you gained, especially coming... I keep going back to this Cape Town versus Joburg mm, thing, mm. but it almost seems like you've done it seamlessly, or is it just being used to those challenges as a black woman? How, how's that experience? Mm. I don't know. I'm very big on, like, work ethic and um, just uh, working in a way that sets you apart from everyone else. So for me, it's not so much about being a black woman in business, but it's just about how, like, what value are you, as Shoni Sani Masuta, um, creating where there, like, wasn't? And where can you, like, slide in and make your mark? Yeah. So, I don't know, I think that keeps me, like, trying super hard and pushing the envelope and, like, learning ways in which I can, like, you know, one up. Mm. Yeah. Uh, I think that almost moves us away from the discussion of competing. You know? mm. I even feel bad because I, I think my partner, she, she corrected me when mm. I said that, is she going to replace Serena Williams? And she got so hacked. And mm. then I realized in my head, do we do that with men in terms of those kind of things? Ah, uh, like pit, is, pit yeah. them against each other. Yeah. You know what's beautiful about this whole Shoni Sunny Braid experience that I'm, happening, uh, that I'm having right now is the fact that a whole bunch of um, black women who mm. own either hair brands or clothing brands, or whatever, they're all reaching out to me and we're all basically working together to up the ante of our brands. So right now my DMs are just like literally full of just uh, other young black women who own businesses and we're just like trying to make it work and collaborate and get to that next level. And I love this like this whole nature now of collaborating instead of competing. Yeah. And I think that's definitely the best way to move forward. Mm. Cool. So obviously being in the sort of film and, and entertainment industry, um, especially in the South African context, I think a lot of people who are not in it or don't understand it probably don't know sort of some of the intricacies involved in terms of like, you know, should you have an agent? Should you not have an agent? When does that happen? Um, do you get, is it easier with an agent or being just your private person? Because mm -hmm. sometimes people might think you're more legit if you have an agent in terms of like, okay, now you're actually professional and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Like, how, how have you navigated that experience? Do, do you have an agent? I have an agent. I 100% advocate for having an agent. I think it's more for the artist's protection. Mm -hmm. A lot of the time when you're an actress or um, an uh, presenter or in the media, um, your legal jargon knowledge and the contracts that you have to sign versus the, where you're coming from, you know. But the thing is, you don't want to be taken for a right. ride. So, <laughs> so you, you have to, like, if you're not going to have an agent, which I, I highly don't, I think you should definitely have an agent. Um, 
mostly for the legal reasons, but also for, um, it's hard to get jobs without an agent mm. because they, they have like a whole agency, like a registry where they get the auditions and then they send them out to all the casting agencies and stuff. Um, and also when you're on set and say you don't have an agent and you get, they need you for something or you get in trouble for something, you have to then act as your own agent, which means even though you're about to shoot a scene where your mother was just shot and you have to break down and cry, mm. you have to go sort out your admin, babe, and staple some stuff or whatever you have to do. But I'm just saying, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think it takes away from what you're there to do. Mm. You, you didn't study to be your own agent. You, you're there to act. So focus all your stuff on that and let the people who do the agent stuff do the agent stuff. And then, yeah, um, I think it's very, very, very important to go on the, to Google the South African registry of um, agencies mm. and see the reputable ones because Oaks are trying to make you pay for things like auditions. Mm. <laughs> if the audition says pay, it's a scam. Like run, guys, never pay for an audition ever. What you need to pay for is good headshots, mm. good lighting, put yourself forward in a, in a you know, mm. professional, awesome light. But other than that, um, Agencies, very important. Mm -hmm. But just make sure you've got the right one. How do you distinguish between agency and manager? Is it still, you know, back in sure. when you heard about the typical Dolly comes to Joburg, yeah. star, it's like you get taken, like you said. Mm. Is it a manager versus an agency? How do you distinguish between those? I don't know because I've never had a manager. I've only ever had an agent. And I think maybe in the future I will have a manager. I think the manager is more about the whole, like the, brand. the whole, the umbrella of yeah. who you are as a brand. And then the agent is specifically about what talent yeah. you're bringing to the table, like your, yeah, booking yeah. jobs. Like, <laughs> my entire knowledge of agency and manager, like uh, the relationship difference is straight from entourage. Of course it's entourage. Yeah. 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 You got Ori Gold, you got, you yeah. got uh, Lloyd, yeah. which what, is a very toxic so relationship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What's the South African version of a manager situation? What does that show with the champagne at this incredible opening scene? Didn't you? Sorry. The show with the Wait, champagne? Is, are you talking about Welfare TV? What, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah. No, but... <laughs> Something like a yeah, yeah. yeah. It was a yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a yeah, Maybe. yeah. Yeah, it was a yeah. I don't know. Never watched it. Never saw any champagne. I'm just guessing. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I think um, you know another another sort of interesting area to kind of discuss or delve into is that you know we're in 2020 now. Pretty much our whole lives are um, in a digital space or in a digital world. Everything's sort of digitized. Um, and now, when you are a public figure, personality, media personality. How do you sort of go about um, sort of engaging on social media? Because it's a tricky space to be in a lot of the times. Um, some people don't know how to navigate it. The mistakes get made. Um, you know, you get a lot of people dropping press statements on notes app. On if you don't have an Apple, I don't know what you do. But <laughs> that's that's a story for another. If I'm not an Apple, I'm not an Apple. Apology, I pull me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so, so based on that, how do you, how do you, how do you basically sort of decide how you are going to engage with your audience? Because obviously you know kind of who are the people that follow you, kind of the reasons why they follow you or support you. And then like, because the only reason I'm asking is that like, for me, if I think about it, if I was a personality or whatever, like I would struggle to kind of almost do that keeping up appearances thing. You'd be swearing at people. Because a lot of time, like, because you can't, I would imagine, like, you can be going through the absolute most. You can't just the be like, pits. yo, I just had the She's worst so nice day one. ever. <laughs> like, I'm depressed or whatever. Because then I don't know, like, I will, what are you saying too much? <laughs> like, do, you, do you know what I mean? Like, dude, like, um, I don't know amicable. if we name names, but uh, also known as, um, you know, to drop a, a statement this week. But let's not go there. Anyway, to answer the question, I was To answer the question, I don't, I, I have a genuine love for social media, right? Um, I, genu I think I got Facebook as soon as, fa like, what grade? Whenever it came out, 2000, Facebook. I was there. MySpace, MySpace I was there. <laughs> Twitter, I was there. LinkedIn, I am there. Snapchat, I am there. TikTok, I haven't gotten into. But, <laughs> but basically, I have a genuine love for social media and a genuine love for people. So it doesn't feel like work, first of all. Second of all, because I'm not, like, putting on... A, a personality it doesn't feel like um, I, I'm at danger of whiling or stepping out of myself because everything I post is super authentic and super me and if, I, if it's not me then I just I can't post it because then people are going to be like girl th this is not you girl but um, I do think it's um, really important to interact with 
your following. Yeah. Like, and I, I believe that since the very beginning. I mean, even before I became like an actress who was mm. on screen, I started all of my professional acting pages for all my um, social medias and I've just been running them like a business ever since. And they've grown so much. I went from like, my Facebook page is thriving right now. And that's where is my most interaction. It's mostly women on Instagram. I think I'm at a 78, which is 78% women is a lot, do you know? Um, it's mostly women and it's mostly like young um, women. And yeah, it's, it's like a very interactive, it's a family. I, if you ever go onto any of my social medias or like my comment sections or whatever, you can, we've built a rapport. It's, it's not just people commenting on a photo. And I think that's really important. Surely that means then you need to have like, you know, who is it like Cardi B has, you know, you have the Yonce fans, you have the body, I think, uh, uh, Shoni Gang. Babe, have you, Shoni have you seen? Gang. There's, she's there's like, there are so see. many. <laughs> I actually just got posted on a picture from an account called Shoni Sanians, which, what? Shoni Sanians, which I love. I, they make up, I was actually on Facebook the other day and there's a group called Shoni Nora Shoni. And then I clicked in and it's just, Picture, just pictures, like screenshots of like me and Mehek, just crazy. I was like, oh my god. <laughs> Isn't that freaky sometimes? But I mean, not yes and no. I see it more as love. Mm -hmm. I don't get any hate, which yeah. is like amazing. Mm -hmm. Everyone who's interacting with me is coming from such a good, they're normally like, I'm so happy for you, or I really love how positive you are. Like, you know, yeah. I, I'd rather we. What, what do you say though when a guy gets a bit too, like, um, we don't reply. We, we, we cannot dignify. We cannot dignify those DMs with a response. Is that the so. reason you went lost, though? For <laughs> well, that specific moment. Just to go. <laughs> Is that how you do it, right? Yeah. Um, Definitely how he does it. Obviously, like, um, your audience is interacting with each, with each other. Yes. It kind of, like, helps the page grow up by itself. Definitely. So, like, it's a lot of your interaction in it, which is very dope. And I think it definitely comes from how natural you are with it and how transparent and, and, and authentic, like you said. Yeah. yeah. Which is, which actually does breed, like, hives. Yeah, yeah and I understand why experience. it would feel like work if it was not me, like, you know what I mean? I understand why it would feel like, oh, I need a day off from this. Yeah. But it, yeah. you know? That's very dope. We're all going on a journey. Now I'm a plant mom, and we're all going on the plant mom journey I like together. The plant journey. Yeah. Nice <laughs> yeah. Actually, there's, there's one other thing I just wanted to ask, mm -hmm. is in, in this time that we're in now with um, COVID and, and being essentially in your space, a freelancer like mm. I, that obviously that situation must be quite difficult mm, in terms mm, of mm. getting work getting jobs because like that particular industry although it's kind of coming back or being allowed to come back like under level three or whatever but not to the extent that it was before uh, and maybe i don't know if that'll ever go mm. back to being normal um how, how has that been for you this period? it's really disheartening i'm not gonna lie i can't sugarcoat the fact that i had big plans for myself this year and i started off the year so well i mean shooting a movie and this and a series and a this and then everything just went and thank god i have the shoni sunny braid and like um my social media pages which are obviously getting me uh, you know campaigns and stuff so that that's the thing that's actually keeping me going right now but yeah. the fact that the fact that i'm not on set is breaking my heart and i really 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 hope that i get a role really soon mm -hmm. but i know that the industry hasn't come to a screeching halt i mean there's still shows obviously being shot everywhere. They're wearing masks, they're doing everything. Um, there's a lot of shot, uh, shows being shut down because people have the COVID as well. So it's a bit of a risk, mm. but I'm really interested to see where we go from here. I am writing, I am trying to just like be proactive about everything. So, but now it's just like in the face of COVID, like how? <laughs> <laughs> No, you get me. You've got fans. We've talked about the people online who know you, yeah. the people who know you personally, and those who've met you through this discussion that we've had. Thank you for your time again. <laughs> I don't think that this is the last time we'll be chatting, mm. hopefully. And yeah, that's it from us. Thank you for joining us. Thank you so much, Sonia, for coming through. Thank, Thank you, guys. Oh, my Chosa. digital gems. Chosa. Chosa. Okay. Chosa. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you guys driving a car? Where are we going? We are. We are. I shot. 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 I